Interesting, interesting idea. Never seen it before. Hello. Oh, why is the door open? It shouldn't be open. Oh my gosh. See, so wanted to bake a really good cake, but we got a muffin. Hi friends, thanks so much for being here. In this video, we'll be unboxing the One Spun Up Club box and the theme is Unsolved Mysteries. <laughs> Some of you may know that I am a VIP. That's a very important page turner for Once Upon a Book Club. And that means I have got a discount code for you guys. And that is Leanda Books 10 to get 10% off your first purchase. And what more can I say about Once Upon a Book Club? They have young adult and adult boxes. They also sell separate items in their web shop. They sometimes have special edition boxes. I also ordered the Bridgerton Volume 2 box. That's gonna be amazing because I'm so looking forward to the next Bridgerton season. I think that's season three, right? Yeah. And I've also read the first four books. So I cannot wait to get the last four books so I can read like about all the Bridgerton kids. Anyways, they also have special edition boxes. It's just really fun. You read the book pick of the month, you come across post-its, they correspond to gifts in your box that relate to something that you have just read. So that really enhances the reading experience. Enough said about Once Upon a Book Club, let's take our first look. When we open a box, the Once Upon a Book Club kit is on top, the quote card, the book, the book of cold cases by Simone St. James and three gifts. As always, I am first going to talk about the book. So I'm going to give you guys a book review and then we'll open the gifts together. The book of cold cases by Simone St. James. This book. Okay. So first of all, I think this is a really good cover. Kind of misleading, but a really good cover. I like how this looks. I would instantly pick this up when I saw this in a bookshop. Also the title just really speaks to me and I instantly wanted to read it as soon as I saw this book. It's kind of a mix between a murder mystery, a cold case and the supernatural. It's not necessarily my genre, uh, the supernatural part because I love a good murder mystery but I was like okay let's roll with it just start reading the book has two timelines so one in 1977 and one in the present there's also two main characters kind of yeah let's say two main characters one is Beth and Beth is suspected of being the lady killer and the lady killer has killed two men I believe or maybe even more in 1977 then we go to the present so Beth is now kind of this old posh lady who lives in this big creepy manor and we meet Shay Collins a receptionist by day but by night she runs a true crime website and one of the cases that she follow was the lady killer case and then one day Beth is standing at her desk so she recognizes her she follows her talks to Beth and somehow Beth says I want to tell the real story to you so all those years she hasn't told the real story to anyone but now she's gonna tell it to this random receptionist girl that followed her and the story kind of starts off from there so we learn more about the case about who could have done it why Beth is a suspect because he went to trial for it she just wasn't convicted so that was interesting to learn more about this cold case but then the paranormal came in I thought at first that it was a really good mix I really enjoyed it I thought oh this is gonna be interesting a bit scary as well but it was a little bit too much for my taste it kind of felt like the paranormal element gave her like a free card to just do it all. But I still feel like a story should make sense and should be logical, even if it's like not logical. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> For me, this is one of those books that has all the right elements. There's a creepy manner, there's a cold case, it's a murder mystery, there are interesting characters, but it just isn't well balanced. And it felt like the plot wasn't that well thought out. She wanted to bake a really good cake, but we got a muffin. Same with the characters. 
They all have very interesting traits or interesting people, but I just didn't really care. And honestly, talking about the book now, I cannot even remember what happened to Beth. So apparently the plot wasn't that impressive. And that's why I ended up with three stars for the book of cold cases. I think I also expected something different. And I think when you have an expectation of a story of a book and it doesn't meet that expectation, it instantly drops a star. But that's just my opinion. I also want to hear your opinion. So let me know if you've read this book. What did you think? Now let's move on to the gifts. So the first post-it can be found on page 98. And this is a scene where we kind of get introduced to the supernatural part of the house that Beth lives in. And this is the house where she grew up and also where something happened to her parents. She walked to the table and grabbed the bottle, willing her hand not to shake. In the kitchen, she ignored the blood on the floor, tracking through it in her nice shoes. She ignored the breeze from the broken door and the huddled shape that she knew was her father's body against the lower cupboards. She flinched away from it and stood at the sink, yanking the cork from the bottle and upending it over the drain. The wine gurgled down the sink. It looked like blood. From the corner of her eye, Beth saw that her father's body was gone. The car's funny gift. We've got a little box. Yes, it has something to do with wine. It doesn't have something to do with blood or creepy stuff or scary stuff. It's actually a fun, practical gift. Let me show you guys. It is a air pressure wine opener set. It's definitely an adult gift. It's always a little bit tricky when you give things that have to do with alcohol because not everyone drinks alcohol or wine for that matter, but I do. So I'm quite happy with this gift. So we have a foil cutter. That's for the top part. Um, that's kind of a good idea because I always kind of scratch at it with my nails and then try to peel it open. An air pressure bottle opener. I am going to have to try that because it feels like it's not going to work. It's basically a needle with an air pump. Interesting. Interesting idea. Never seen it before. We've got a pour spout. That's cool. I've always wanted one of those. And there's a vacuum wine stopper. I actually already have one of those, but you can never have enough. Like you can never have enough vacuum wine stoppers. Personally, I thought this was a brilliant gift, but again, I'm a wine drinker, so I am really going to get some good use out of this wine set <laughs> and something I have never gotten in a box before. So I'm really happy with that gift. All right. Then we also have this little thing over here. We need to talk about this once upon a book club because this, although I get it, like I get why you added it really, it wasn't necessary. It didn't add to my reading experience. Okay. Let me explain to you guys. So this is a QR code, right? You scan it. You come to this sound bit on SoundCloud. And when you click on it, it says, I'm still here because there's a scene in the book where it says that it's whispered into the phone speaker. I'm still here. That's the, the supernatural part. So you literally just hear someone whispering, I'm still here. It just didn't really add to the vibe. It, it kind of just pulled me out of the story actually. So I think it would have been better if they just used sound effects, like a creepy manner, like you hear creaking boards or things falling. And then you hear somebody say, I'm still here. But this was just like the little part. I'm still here. I appreciate it, but maybe next time do something more. Next post it can be found on page 154. And this is Shay. She is in the manor and she is sneaking around. I stepped inside. I felt like an intruder in this room, as if the man who owned it would walk back in at any minutes. He's been dead for over 40 years. I reminded myself as I approached the desk and put my hand on one of the drawer handles. After a brief pause to inhale a breath, I yanked the drawer open. Inside was a pack of cigarettes, Winston's in the distinctive red and white package. Next to it was a heavy metal lighter. There was an empty ashtray on the desk. I pushed aside the cigarettes left here by a man dead for decades and picked up a piece of paper from the stack beneath it. It was a phone bill dated January 3rd, 1972, listing the calls in and out of the house. My God, had Beth thrown nothing away in all these years? This was some kind of mental illness, maybe even a psychosis. How was it possible that she looked so modern and fashionable 
when she lived in this museum? How could she be mentally stable when for 40 years her life had been lived in a shrine to her parents? Yes, we have a theme here. It's bad habits. No, I don't know, but it's kind of funny though. First, we get something to kind of like boost your alcohol um, intake. And now we're getting something that kind of promotes smoking. It's not how they meant it, but still, it's kind of funny when you think about it. So this is the next gift. Um, we got the yellow police tape and when we open it up, there is an ashtray. No, it's just a little dish, but they made it look like the ashtray because they put in a little piece of paper uh, with um, cigarettes on there. And I notice now that there is something on there. It's a bookies ring dish. Ah, so it's not an ashtray. Smoking isn't promoted here. Alcohol is, but smoking isn't. <laughs> it is really pretty and they call it bookies because there is text on the inside of the dish. And I do not recognize it because it says chapter one, loomings. It feels a bit chaotic to me. So maybe it's just a bunch of words put together. I mean, they're real sentences, but they, they don't make sense as a whole, uh, for me at least. So I think this would have been a better gift if it was text from the book, but I do really like that it's a bookish dish. And I actually don't have a place to put my rings. I just have a big drawer when I have all these little separate bags and I just put all my rings in there. Uh, so this is, is better for me if I have a little ring dish. So I'm I'm really happy with this. And then the final post-it can be found at the end of the story. Ah, and now I remember what happened to Beth. Yeah, this is a huge spoiler. So please skip this part if, if you still wanna read the book. <laughs> the next week I got a packed in the mail, a red shawl, old and well cared for, folded neatly in tissue paper. It took me a minute to realize it was the shawl Beth had worn the day she was acquitted when she stood next to Ransom in front of all those reporters. The shawl from the photo that had gone on the cover of life. Beth hadn't put a note with the shawl, but she didn't have to. She was telling me that she knew what victory felt like, especially when it was hard won. I put the shawl in the closet, neatly tucked into its tissue paper, and I didn't tell anyone about it. Beth Greer was dead. She was a murderer, a bitch, a cipher, a lonely girl raised by a broken family, she was brave and manipulative and selfish, and I owed her. I hated that, but I did. This is the corresponding gift, and I think this is meant to look like a road, and I don't know if that's a coincidence, but the lady killer shot two men in the face at the side of a road, I think. So maybe that's a reference? I don't know. And we have got, we have got the cover of Life, and this is apparently Beth in her younger years with the red shawl. And yes, we got the red shawl. It smells a bit funny though. It's really nice actually. Wow, I like it. It's nice. It feels really good. I feel a little bit like a grandma when I wear these kind of things. I think this is, oh yeah, I know what I'm gonna use it for because you know when you have a dress and it's summer and you don't wanna wear a vest over your dress you can use this you can just wrap it around yourself and you still look classy it looks really good it feels good it smells a bit weird but that's probably because it's been in a box for a long time good quality yes i am happy with this and i think this little cover thingy is a nice touch it wouldn't be once upon a book club if we didn't get a quote card because we always get a quote card in every box and this one says you didn't change my life I did. And then at the back, we have a letter from the author. If you want to read it, just pause the screen. Of course, the bookmark and the book club kit. Inside, there is a conversation with the author, discussion questions and real long dates. And they always put kind of this little activity on the back. And in this case, it is a true crime crossword puzzle the only edible murder weapon i really don't know if you guys know the answer let me know the only edible murder weapon it's got five letters so that's that's fun i am definitely gonna try and, and fill in this crossword puzzle and with that i've shown you all the gifts and gave you my book review 
overall, what did I think of this box? I mean, I thought this was a good box, not a great one, uh, mainly because I was not that into the book. I did really like the gifts. I think they were good quality and all three were gifts that I'm definitely going to use. I think they're just fun gifts and not necessarily gifts that really made me feel more connected to this world or to this story. And I'm kind of missing that from Once Upon a Book Club lately. I would love for them to add little details that really make you notice that it's something from the book, from that world. But as I said, I, I think it's a good box overall. I enjoyed the book, even though it wasn't really my thing. And I really enjoyed the gifts. My personal favorite is definitely the wine opener set because it's just a good gift and I think it's such a fun idea to put this in a box. But that's also what I mean. This this doesn't really enhance the reading experience in a creepy manner. It's just a fun gift and you read about a character opening a bottle of wine. So that's what I meant. It would have been more fun if it was kind of personalized or if there was some other element that they added to make it more connected to the story. Of course, I'm also really interested to hear your thoughts. So let me know in the comments of what do you think of this box, of the book, of the items. And that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and let's stay in touch.